So I'm going to hand it off to Christina, but this is going to set the foundation for so many of us that want to move forward with more of this. Thank you so much, Christina, for being willing to do this with us. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so I mentioned last time that I, I honestly just discovered Canva probably a few months ago, but I've absolutely fallen in love with it. And uh, it's great for social media. It's great for so many different things. You can design cards on it, um, posters. Um, some people even use it to design their websites. So today I'm just gonna give you like a walkthrough of how to use the different tools. Um, just so you can learn how to navigate it. I'll go through like some samples of how to swap out things so that you know how what to do to you know, you can use the templates, but then you customize it to your brand. Okay. So I'm just going to share my screen. So if you don't already have an, an account, it's www.canva.com. And then you would basically sign in uh, or sign up, which is the option here. I already have an account. So that's why it's asking me to log in. But if you don't, then you would just sign up. And this is actually free. Um, they do not charge you anything. Um, so I'm just gonna log in. If you, the only thing is with the free option, you're not going to have access to everything. Um, there are certain pictures and options that will say pro, and that means you need to set up for the actual pro account. But, I'm going to show you. So when you first go in, you'll see here right at top, right on top here are the different things that you can do. So I always just go into my social media. And if you already have an account, you would see all of your existing designs that you've made along the bottom here. And you can go back into them again. You can tweak them and reuse them for different things. Um, but today I'm gonna quickly show you. So if you go into social media, Along here, you'll see that there are different options for you. So Instagram post, here's an Instagram story. There's a Facebook post. Um, but these are basically, the difference is if I go, see how I scroll over it, it'll, it will give you the dimensions here. So this is how you know how big the size is going to be. So if I'm doing an Instagram post, I click on that. And this will bring up my blank canvas. Now, if I want to use an existing template, then just over here on the side, you can see here it says search templates. You can scroll through those, but usually I'll just type in whatever I'm looking for. So for instance, if I'm looking for dogs, something to do with dogs, these are all the existing templates that I can use. And let's say, I wanna use, let's say I wanna use this one here. There, can you see that one? So yeah. if I use that and I wanna, I'm not too thrilled with the coloring of this cause it doesn't really go with my theme. So to change the color, so we're gonna work through this right now. I'm gonna show you how to navigate through this. Um, if I click on this box here, this is actually the background box. And if I wanna change that color, so I'm going to change it to this color right here. And already you can see that it's starting to become more alive. So if I want to change my font color, it's actually right up here. This is your font color. And I'm going to change it to the darker blue. Um, and same thing here as well. I'm going to change it again to the darker blue. And you can just click on whatever you want to change and you can change the colors. And I'll just show you this here. You can tell that it's been twisted. It's not like on a straight angle and you can turn it even more. So if you want to change it, you can just twist it back and forth to however you like it and it will rotate. Um, so, and if you've made a mistake and you're like, oh, I don't like that, this is the back button here. So that's undo. You can just press that to undo it. And then 
Uh, for sizing for fonts, if I wanted to change this font, it's actually right up here. And you can pick all the different fonts that are in here that you would like to change. So let's say I want to change it to Argent. Can I add something small to this for the fonts? Sure. If you go to the search above um, popular fonts and you want a specific type of font, like a minimalist or um, yeah. a calligraphy, it it'll in. show you that. Exactly. So I like to use um, handwriting a lot. You can see it right there. <laughs> so, and it will bring up all the different types of handwriting. So you can, you can do shortcuts like that. Even if I want to say I want to use bold, then it'll bring up all the bold fonts. And then if you want to change your sizing of your font, that's here. You can just hold it and it'll increase it. You can also stretch it just by doing that. You can stretch it as well. And then to move something, so see how it's no longer centered? Oh, sorry. You can actually just go in here. Where did it go? There it is. And those grid lines tell you it's centered. So that's how you know things are centered. So as soon as I move it off, it's no longer centered. But once I move it back, it's been centered. And then if I go down here again, I can change the background color for this box here. I'm gonna change it to a yellow, let's say. I'm gonna make this font now, cause it's faded. I'm gonna change that to a blue to make it stand out. And you can edit your text. I want that, you can just click right into the box and I'm gonna say my furry friends. There. And then to make everything kind of cohesive, I'm just gonna pick up that color of the yellow again. There we go. And that's your new one. So you can see how quickly you can change the colors and just add um, your own branding color to it or tweak it anyhow you like. If I wanted to change this picture, I could do that. And say I wanted to go to photos. You can search in here for dogs. And here are all the pictures that you can use. I can pick that one. Oh, I assume you can upload your own picture too. Absolutely. So yeah, so you just drag it right in and I'll plop it in. If you need to change, say I want it to be over more, then you just double click it. And that little shadow area, it just shows your, your area of your picture there, your existing picture. And you can just drag it and then change where you want the placement like that. Now, um, Maria, you were just saying with uploads, you can go right here. This is the upload section here. You can upload your own media. And I already have some in here. Um, this is my dog there. So, and then again, if I double click in that, I can drag it around and just center it how I like it. And there you go. So that's how you can quickly make some changes. Um, if I wanted to add, say, another dog paw, so these are what they call elements here. These dog paws are elements. You can just go into your elements section here. If I wanted to add, say, a bigger paw, then I could just go in here and just type paw. And I can grab, say, this one with the heart. And then just drag it wherever you want it. Size it down. And just place it wherever you want that paw to go. Whoops. Wrong one. This is your location changing location thing here. That's easy to move. Um, and the other thing I want to mention is that when you, you can actually resize these too. So if you've created this and you were like, oh, I now want, first I would save it. So you can always download it 
and save it. And it gives you the different options here on how to save it. Um, so you can just choose whatever option works for you, JPEG, um, if you want. And then once you save it, say I wanted now to post, so this is an Instagram post size, say I wanted it for my Facebook page, you can actually go to this option right here, which is resize, and you can choose Facebook post, and it will copy and resize it for you. And see how it's changed the dimension of the post for you now. So this will actually now be suitable for your Facebook page. Does anyone have any questions on that so far? Can, can you please show what other formats you can save it in? What other formats? Sure, change that. Um, you can go down. So you can actually change, save it as a video, a GIF, um, PNG. Um, and then now for people who want to do a video, you can actually go, I'm going to start over. Uh, so I'm just going to start from scratch so you know again how to navigate this. But if I wanted again just to go in and say I wanted to do an Instagram story. I'm going to grab my blank. So I'm starting now from scratch instead of using a template. So if I'm going to do a video, then what I want to do is actually you can just, I'm going to grab a frame. So if you go in here, you'll see all the frames are here. You can press see all to see all your different options of the frames that you're going to use. I'm going to take this one right here. I'm going to stretch it. And then I'm going to take my uploads. So you can also go into videos here. They do have free videos that you can use. So I'll show you, like, for instance, if I wanted to take, say, this, just drag it in and drop it. And you'll see the video there. Um, now, again, some of these are free. So this one here is free. That's free and some of them are pro. So it really depends. You just have to click on it. It'll show you which ones are free. Now, if I were to use one of mine, again, you would just go into upload. And here on the top, you'll see your images or videos. I'm gonna select my videos. I'm gonna put in this video right here. Oh, sorry, right there. And now the thing with the videos are, so when I play, this is actually a really, really long video. Instagram story actually only allows for, I believe, a maximum of 14 seconds, maybe. So to crop this, because I already know this is way too long and I don't want it, you know, with the different sections. I just want one section on Instagram um, story. So right here, the scissors is actually where you go in. If you click on that, you can actually crop your video just by dragging this. And here's my person in the canoe. I'm gonna keep that. And you'll see right here, as I'm dragging it, it tells you exactly how many seconds this is playing for. Does everyone see that? Christina? Yes. I have a question <clears throat> for the video. I don't, I've never done this part specifically. I've done videos, but not what I'm about to ask. Can okay. you take the first five seconds of the video and the last like eight seconds of the video? Um, no, it doesn't look like it allows you to. Okay. So what you can do um, is you can create a duplicate page. So right here, this button here. So say I have this video already in here. I can actually create a duplicate crop. And we just say, we'll move this to the beginning. And you just want it for the, say, five seconds. Okay, that's done there. 
But then for the second page, say I go on this one, right? So I'll crop this to say almost eight. There we go, that's good enough. Yes. And we'll save that, so that's done. So now when you download this, um, because it's a video, you're going to download it as an MP4 video. So I'm gonna download this. And what's going to happen is it's actually gonna create this as two separate uh, like pages, two individual pages, which will then be saved for you. And then when you go to post your Instagram, you know how you can do the multiple pages, like multiple selections? You would basically select both of these and they will play back to back. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like but, would that, but would that be in one story or would it be on the next? That would be on the next story. That would be on the next story though. That's, yeah. But I'll show you like, for instance, in my designs, I'll show you the one that I did. So if you look at this one here, I actually created this as like, it, it's actually a video. So when you watch this in my Instagram, this comes up and this actually plays as a video. So it's like each individual and, and it actually scrolls. Like you don't have to scroll yourself. It just, it just keeps playing. But what I, does animate do? Animate means like I can do different, um, like for instance here, I'll use this one. If I were to take this image here, um, this thing, and I wanted to animate it. So when you go to someone's Instagram post and you were to scroll to this, it would actually do this effect. It's, it's a basic animation effect. Um, so you can do something like that. And there's just different ones, different options that you can use. And then, um, but if I wanted a animated template, so one that's already been done for me, you can actually go in here and they do have some that are already pre-done, pre-made. And so you can go in here and you can use any one of these that already have like an animated effect to it. Here's a Christmas one. So these are all pre-made. So all you're doing, you can just go in there and you can still change these. Like you can go in there and still make your changes to them. See, so it has that effect there behind the cat. So if I didn't, you know, like if I want to change that, I can go in and change the cat if I wanted and add, I don't know, a bat. <laughs> so, so yeah, so just because those are there, it just means that the animation has already been created for you. There has an, um, an animated effect in the post already for you. But if you wanted to make your own, then you would just use this button here. Christina, do you, do you know how to find the worksheets that are there that, that could help us with, um, with actually putting together the interior of like with some different worksheets for kids. Go back to like your home page on this yes. and at the top of your at the top where you can kind of search for the different types of things where it says search. Canvas. Oh, yes. So yep. Look there and type in the word worksheet. And you guys will start, it'll start making you guys think about when you're doing it. Now you can scroll through all kinds of things here that you can use to, you know, for activity books, you know, you get all kinds of different things that you can add to your book, your interior and, and modify for yourself. So if you're doing like a coloring and activity book, or you want to throw in some different types of things like for a journal, there's a story tree and there's, there's even like printing writing lines and things like that. You can use these and add them to anything that you want to develop for yourself. April, yeah. those pages are the professional version of reversion. 
Um, I think they probably have some that are uh, that are free, but they'll show you the professional ones. If it's not marked as professional, then anybody can use it. Uh, Any Christina, are you running professional right now? I purchased the professional package. Like April was saying, though, there are many, like before I even purchased the pro, you do have 30 days. Um, like you can sign up for free and then switch over to the pro if you feel that you need the pro. Um, I started off with the free and I just wanted to open up my options for everything. So I purchased the pro. So honestly, this it, there's just so much. I, I've only, like I said, I've only started using this for the last few months. And it's made, I think, my Instagram so much more pleasing to the eye. Like visually, it's just more appealing. Um, I've come up with my own theme for Instagram. So I do like a grid thing where there's like a color box and then it's a white box and then it's a color box. So it's almost like a checker box theme. Um, and using Canva to do that has really, really helped to, I find just to make my page more visually appealing. I did wanna show you one more thing, um, which I forgot to mention. So if you have an Instagram account and it's a business account, um, it's free. You don't have to pay for a business account. Um, but what you can do is once you've created your post, so we created this one before, you can actually go in here once you've saved it and everything, you can go in here and you can actually post it straight to wherever your social media account is. So say it's, um, say it's my Instagram business right here. Um, there's my dragonfly story time. You can write your caption right in here. So you can write whatever it is. And then you can go right here is your calendar. You can actually go in here and I can schedule this for tomorrow. And so I can pick the time that I want it to post. And then once I press done, it's scheduled for tomorrow to post. So that's how you can go. So you can actually go in for people who don't want to spend like, you know, I probably spend way too much time just trying to format all of my stuff because <laughs> I just love it so much. But, you know, for the amount of time that I spend, sometimes it's easier for me just to go in and say, create like three or four of them and then have it scheduled for each day. So I know it's done and I don't have to look at it for the rest of the week in, in the sense of trying to plan and create something during the week. Um, so this is a way that you can quickly just have your designs created and then have them scheduled for when you want them to post. So right here, so this box here that, um, hold on one second right here where it says write a caption. So one, one other thing that I like to actually use the notes for is sometimes if I'm doing like a presentation, I can actually create my presentation in Canva and then have my notes so that they appear for me as I'm doing the presentation. So you can actually do that in Canva. Um, I don't use it for that, but that's, I know one of my girlfriend loves it um, because she does webinars. And so she usually uses Canva to create um, all of her, her videos and um, her presentations. And here too, so if you go up here, you can see there are presentations here that are already, so there's, there's so many options, honestly, you just kind of have to go through and scroll through and see what the different options are. But you can use Canva to make your posters even for when you're ready to do your marketing. Um, you can create your posters, you can create bookmarks in here. So I'm going to search here for a book. Um, oh, here's bookmarks. Everyone sees the bookmarks. So you can go in there and create your bookmarks for your marketing tool. Um, book mockups. So, uh, April, can I ask you a question about Canva? Um, so like, you know, in the worksheets, you're doing the worksheets and you're, you're customizing it. So it becomes part of your book. It's okay then with the copyright, everything, right? That you're, you're good to be able to use their templates and, and make some yeah. original work you, from that. So don't use it as is, modify it. As long as you modify it and make it your own, then mm -hmm. you're fine. Right here is an actual book mock-up here. So you can go, 
that's your book. And then you can upload, say, your cover. Um, there's mine. And you have to play with the shadows and stuff a bit. Oh, I forgot to mention. So when you're picking, so these are not like set colors here. That's, you have a huge palette to use. Uh -huh. so say like, I, I don't like this yellow. It's way too bright for me. I can actually go right here to the document colors. Um, and I can click on that plus sign. And right here, you can actually take the circle and drag it anywhere you want. And it will just, it will actually change the color as you're dragging. And then you just choose when to stop. And along here is the scroll bar. You can just scroll along here as well. And again, say I want a brighter yellow. I want to go brighter, more bright right there, or maybe over here. Ooh, too yellow, bright yellow. So yeah, so you just kind of scroll around there. So the great thing about the color thing is that you can actually go in here and this is your color wheel here. It will automatically pick up the colors that are in whatever you just dragged in. And that becomes part of your color palette is what they call it. So this here is your color palette. It's picking up whatever you've added to your, um, your, uh, your canvas here. It picks up the colors and it adds it automatically over here um, so that you can use it to, to make your post your creation more cohesive, basically. So if I wanted now, if I wanted to change the color of this green, all I have to do is actually click on that color. It's going to highlight that color and then I can go and change it to a different color. If I want to change it to say um, a brighter green, I can do that. If I want to change this now to a different color, I can do that. So it just quickly, that's just ways that you can go in and change your palette colors. So these are, I mean, a lot of these colors right here are my palettes, the blue, not so much. So you can choose, you can go in here and choose a palette that you want to right here where it says add and discover palettes. You can go in here and scroll through and say, oh, I like this palette. This is, this is my palette right here. So if I use that palette now, so there's my palette there. Um, and I can just go in. So there, and there's my, and you'll see that the colors are now there that I selected for, from, my, from my brand palette. So if you already have your brand palette created and you want to change even your brand palette colors, it's as simple as just going into that section and Xing out with all the ones that you don't like and then just adding the ones that are suitable for your brand. And then you'll always just have them right here for you within your color selection. Is there any questions? Oh, and you do have folders too. You can create your folders if you want. So mm -hmm. you wanted to create folders for your individual social media accounts. So one for Instagram, one for Facebook. Um, or say uh, worksheets, you can go in and actually create folders and then file them that way too, to keep everything more organized for you. Canva can do so much. I've actually even purchased templates that I you can import into Canva. So I have all kinds of things for like a workbook and different layouts that I can use now because I think I pay $27 and I've got a bazillion templates to use. Yeah, there really are. Oh, I forgot to mention. So with text, let's go in here. Again, I'm just going to use this in a, as an example. I'm actually going to remove that. Let's remove that. Let's play with text for a second. So when you add a text, if you click on the text here, they have different options for you. So this here is like to add a larger heading. That's your subheading. And that's just like the little body text area. Um, so let's say we wanted to add a heading that would be your heading. And then say you wanted a subheading. And then you wanted your text 
down here. So your text is going to be down here and then say, or maybe you wanted like a really fancy heading, um, some type of text. These are all texts that are already pre-made and you can just scroll through them and see which ones you like. But say you wanted to use something like, um, let's say this one. So here's farm to table. You would just click on this and then you can just, and just go in and edit it however you need to edit. You can change the font style and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of neat. Um, I personally like to do my own headings. So this box here is completely grouped. Um, so when I move it around, all of the elements move around together. If you want to ungroup that, it's actually right up here. You can just press ungroup and now you can actually move each section separately from the rest. So Christina, you do you know how to make a grouped section? So if you take shift and you click it together, it will group it. Okay. And then again, if you want to ungroup it, you just press that and it ungroups it. Um, and the other part too, oh, sorry, ungroup. Um, I forgot to mention, these are actually spacing. So if I wanted my, text here to be closer together, I can actually take this and change the spacing so that it's closer together. Now that's if it's grouped together. Add a heading to this section. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that so you can see this section. Okay. So this section here, if I don't like the spacing for that, I think it's a little bit too far apart. This arrow, these two arrows here are the spacing sections and I can actually just move those closer together. You can also change the letter spacing so that uh, it's further apart. Oh, sorry, those are bullets. You can add bullets. And you can also, right here's the line spacing. I mean, letter spacing. So I can make this closer together further apart, that's how you adjust that. Um, and then the other cool part, I think I already mentioned, so you can change the font color. You can make it italics, uh, you can underline it, and uh, you can even make it all uppercase. So these are all quick little shortcuts that you can use. Can you outline it? Um, I think that's effects. You yep. can so right here is your effects and you can use different styles here. So for instance, if I were to um, say this one, that's the different effects you can do. Mm -hmm. Right there. So, you know, and this is really cool too is, um, oh, so say I had this and I wanted this to actually, you can just pick it up and drag it anywhere you like. For things that are like really, really like, like I really want this. And sometimes it's hard to like, you know, get it to go where you want. And then one other thing I want to show you is the position um, option, which you can use say, okay. So say, see how those flowers are now in front of my heading here? I don't want that. So what I can do is just click on that go to position and then you can just send it backwards. And now it's behind my, my heading. So you can do that. And again, you can adjust this, turn it. And it's okay if it goes off the page, it's just gonna cut it off of that. So don't worry if you see it, oh my goodness, it's, it's cutting off at the page. I kind of like that effect sometimes. Um, and yeah, so you can just play around with it. But there's honestly so many options in here. You can go through and just, you know, you can create grids if you want. Um, so you can have like two different pictures in here side by side. There's so many different ways of playing with this. Um, I, I can't even tell you like, I could spend all day playing in Canva. Does anyone have any other questions about this? 
Have you ever used audio? You can add music. So if that's what you mean, like, yeah, you can absolutely add music to what you want. Um, so for instance, so right here, this is what I created the other day. And I was thinking it would be really nice to have some music to go with it. So if I type in here, native and uh, let's try healing. So you would take this and you would just pull it in. And I mean, you can't hear it anymore. Oh, there you go. So if you scroll over it, you'll hear it. This is where you choose how, okay. And this will, this here tells you how long you can use it for. Um, so you can scroll it to anywhere part of that music and choose where you want the music to play like that. Okay. But yeah, that's how you would do audio. I've never used it personally. Can you show how you would upload your own, illust you know, your own images? Oh yeah, of course. It might be good. And then of course there's background removal, which is amazing for people like us that have illustrations, because if you just want your character and you wanna be able to use that in other things, you can use Canva to remove the background and it's so simple. Yeah, I'll show that to you right now. So say we were to go in here, I'm just gonna add a frame quickly. So I'm just gonna add this frame here. And then I'm gonna go to uploads, I'm gonna upload my media. So this is where you would actually go in to upload your files. You can even upload stuff from your um, Instagram, Instagram or Facebook as well, or you have Dropbox or Google Drive. I'm gonna go straight to my, um, my file here. Okay, so we're gonna use Bear again. And if you click on this and you go to its effects, right here you'll have the option to background remover. And if you click on that, it takes a few seconds for them to figure it out. Christina, why did you add a frame behind the picture? I personally just like frames. I find they're easier to work with. Oh, okay. Uh, so like, yeah, so then that way it just puts it in the frame for me already. If you just, so if you didn't do this frame that you did, and you just remove the background, then it would be like on nothing. So meaning if I wanted to print it on a t-shirt, let's say, and the t-shirt was white, then you wouldn't see anything but the dog, correct? Yep. yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this back in again. And then I'm gonna change this to white. And then we're gonna take the, um, sorry, picture, go to effects, and you're going to take out the background remover again. I guess what I'm saying like is if you put it on a t-shirt, you would have like, it would be like white and then the, like, let's say you put it on a black t-shirt. It would be like a white square with the dog coming out of it. Oh, so no. So you would save it as a PNG. So the PNG ah. moves the background behind. PNG makes the image transparent. Let me go up. So see this one here, that's my regular JPEG. And these ones here are actually the PNG files. They have a trans oh. background. So if I change the color here to blue. So that's what, so I'm gonna show you the difference now. So this is a PNG file. And then this Got here it. is the, the regular. Do you see how it's white? So you could take your logo and print it on a t-shirt and no matter what color the t-shirt is that the person orders, I mean, obviously other than black, then it will just have exactly what you're just showing me instead of like the square around it. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, you just need to make sure that when you export it, that you make that you choose a transparent background, because not just just saving it as a PNG won't guarantee that it'll be transparent, but when I, you're here, 
you can put, you can do the transparency when you export it. So right here's PNG and then mm -hmm. it's click here for transparent background. Otherwise it'll export it with all the color and it will, yeah. you know, it will have that opposite effect. Okay, so you would have to click here for transparent background in here. I, I created the, the um, my file for the logo in Photoshop. So I just uploaded it into Canva for me to use. But if you wanted to create your own, you could just do it in here and then just again, um, select PNG and then select the transparent background. So this is right now set up. So the 1080 by 1080 pixel is, has automatically been chosen because I, when I went to create this, I had selected an Instagram post size, right? If you wanted to change this, you can change it, but it's gonna, it, then it's gonna change this whole layout is what I'm saying. So it's better to start off with whatever layout you want before when you start creating your thing, instead of trying to change it afterwards. You can also take this and say, okay, I don't want the size anymore and go to the resize option and then change it from there because in here they have all the different options. So if you wanted to change it to a poster, um, there's actually one for a logo. You can go in here and change it to, you know, whatever size you need in here. And it will automatically change it. There we go. Pop culture t-shirt, copy and resize. So that's for, oh, and there you go. I've never done the t-shirt one. That's cool. And that's it folks.